Hello, I'm Francis from Last Minute English. Today, we're going to look at nine steps to get you a band nine in your IELTS writing. Let's get started. So we're going to be looking at an IELTS writing task two question, and it's a common topic, which is the topic of crime. And the question we're going to look at is this one. Studies show that crime rates are lower amongst those with educational degrees. Therefore, the best way to reduce the crime rate is to educate criminals while they are still in prison. To what extent do you agree or disagree? So, in this video, we're going to be developing and writing this answer together. So, the first step that we have to think about is finding the core of that question. It's quite a long question, and we can get a little bit distracted by the different parts. So it's important whenever you get an IELTS writing task two question to try to break it down and turn the question into one simple core version. We're just going to keep it as simple as we can. So what is the core of this question? I think the core is educating criminals in prison is the best way or is not the best way to reduce crime, okay? And then we get a kind of suggested or implied second question. Is there a better way to reduce crime than educating criminals in prison? And why do we find the core? Well, first of all, it helps us in step two, which is a brainstorm generating lots of ideas. And it helps us when we're in the middle of writing our essay to be able to go back and to check, okay, am I really focusing on this question or did I get distracted and start thinking about a different question? So it's very useful in that sense. It keeps us focused on the question. So I suggest when you've decided what the core of the question is, write it down on your, maybe on your question paper or somewhere not as part of your answer, of course, but somewhere on a separate set of paper that's easy for you to quickly check to keep yourself focused on target, on question. And then we move to step two. So step two is a brainstorm. It's really important to do this step. Don't try and skip this step. Make sure you do your brainstorm. What is a brainstorm? It's getting lots and lots of ideas about one topic. So for this question, our topic is, what are the ways that we can reduce crime? We can lower the crime rate. How exactly can we do that? And what I'd like you to do is to stop this video now, pause and have a think about that. Have a think, so maybe educating criminals in jail is one idea, which other ideas can you think of? And I want you to put them in the comments underneath this video, okay? Just a few words is fine. And tell me what your ideas are. So some possible ideas that we could go for. The first one would be reducing poverty. If we reduce poverty, we reduce the need for people to commit crime. And then the crime rate goes down. Or we could do more surveillance of the whole population, more cameras, more police, uh, checking our emails, checking our messages, all of those types of things to find more criminal activity. And that also will reduce the crime rate. And a third idea could be stricter punishments. So if people know they're considering committing a crime, but they know the punishment is very strict, they might decide, okay, I'm not gonna do it. And that also would reduce crime. So those are just three ideas, and hopefully you've got some more as well. It's good to get a nice range of ideas when you're brainstorming. And something that's good practice for your, your writing and, and your generating ideas, you don't have to do this during the real test, but when you're preparing for the test is writing down some of your ideas into full sentences. So, for example, if you have the idea reduce poverty while you're preparing for the test, you can write down 
you know, how you would explain that in one or two sentences. For example, poverty is the single biggest cause of crime, as people who are desperate to feed their families will go to any lengths to do so. Therefore, reducing poverty will reduce crime. So this is something that we could do in practice, and then we'd have that memory of doing it, and we'd kind of have our sentence prepared. And if this topic came up in the real test, we'd just go bring it out and put it straight into the essay. Then step three is to decide our opinion, decide our position, because this is a to what extent do you agree or disagree type of question. So we, we have to take a position and we have three choices. So you can see them here. We can completely agree, we can completely disagree, or we can partially agree. And here's something that many people ask me. Many of my students say, should I give my real opinion? Is my real opinion important when I'm writing my IELTS Writing Task 2 essay? My answer to that is absolutely not. Your real opinion is important in all of the rest of your life. In the IELTS Writing Test, your real opinion doesn't matter at all. It's not important. But why not? Why is your opinion not important? The reason is that you're in a test, you're in an exam. And the IELTS test is not a test of your opinion. It's not a test of, do I agree with your idea about what's the best way to reduce crime? Absolutely not. It's a test of your English. So it's a really good idea for you to choose the position that is easiest for you to write about. So let's say that your true opinion is that, let's say, um, educating criminals in prison is definitely the best way. And you have so many reasons for that. And you know so much about it. But you think that it would be very hard for you to write about because the vocabulary is too hard or you have better vocabulary if you're going to disagree. Then forget about your real opinion. Focus on whatever is the easiest way for you to show your best English. And then as soon as the test is over, you can go oh, and get back to having your real opinion. But while you're in the test, opinion is not important. English is important. Now, everybody is different and some people will have an easier time maybe completely agreeing or completely disagreeing. But I always think the easiest uh, opinion to write about is partially agree. Okay, so you kind of agree to some extent that, let's say, reducing uh, uh, crime would be achieved by educating criminals. But you think it's not the only way to do it. Okay, that would be partially agreeing, like half agreeing. And so if we were to partially agree for our essay that we're writing, it means one paragraph would be writing about why educating criminals would reduce the crime rate. Why is it a good idea? But then the second body paragraph would be focused on another way that's, say, equally good or even better for reducing crime. And for the essay that we're going to write, the topic or the point that we're going to choose is poverty, reducing poverty to reduce crime. So now we've decided our opinion, the next step is organizing. Organization is really, really important for getting a high score in IELTS Writing Task 2. So what we need to organize this type of essay is an introduction, and we'll look at how to do that in a minute. We need a first body paragraph, which is going to be all about uh, educating criminals in prison. And then we're going to talk about how reducing poverty can reduce crime in our second body paragraph. And then we go with a conclusion. And something really important that I've talked about in some other videos is that we don't want to try to put in two or three or four different points into one paragraph. 
One point for one paragraph is enough. All right, please remember that. I see so many essays where people have five ideas and they just try to put all of them in. Choose your best idea or your best two ideas and that's what you're going to use to build your essay. And then once we have uh, completed all of the preparation, step five is to start writing. So first we're going to do our introduction and the introduction has two parts. There's the background sentence or background statement and then there is the thesis statement, okay? So let's take a little look. I've written some examples for us here. So first of all, the background sentence or statement. The question of how best to reduce the crime rate is something that countries around the world have long struggled with. So what are we doing? We're giving the big picture, kind of the background of what this essay is going to be about. And it's a very wide view. Okay, so you can think of introductions kind of like a V shape. They start very wide with one sentence about the big picture and then they focus in. So they focus in with the thesis statement. Here we go. While educating convicts in prison is one way to reduce the crime rate, another excellent approach would be to reduce poverty. So what are we doing? We're giving our opinion. We're saying that yes, educating convicts can help, but it's not the only way. There are other ways. And so as the examiner, as I'm reading this, I know that the structure of this essay is going to be first body paragraph, educating criminals, second body paragraph, reducing poverty. It makes it really clear. And that means that I'm happy. As an examiner, I'm feeling happy. And I feel like this is going to be a pretty good essay. So once we finish the introduction, we're going to move to step six. And step six is writing our body paragraphs. So this will be the majority of your time in the test. Okay, this is probably, ooh, let's say 80% of writing task two is your body paragraphs. And many people have trouble organizing these ones and uh, knowing what they should put where. And I think a good method that we can use is OREC. So OREC is kind of a device to help remind us the step-by-step -step process of writing a good body paragraph. So we start with our opinion. It's usually one sentence. It's going to mention that key point, for example, reducing poverty. And it's going to be quite short. It's just going to give us the idea of what this paragraph is all about. Next, the R is reason. And that just means to explain why, let's say, reducing poverty would be uh, something that would be effective. We're explaining our point more. Then we move on to E, which is evidence or example. Now, if you're writing something, let's say, for university, uh, you probably have some time to do some research and find real evidence. In the IELTS test, of course, you don't have that. So it's good to just imagine an example, okay? Use a hypothetical or imagined example for this part. And then finally, a conclusion. So just one sentence to summarize, to remind us again, what is the main argument, the main point of this paragraph? So now that we know OREC and we know what it is and how we can use it, let's take a look at an example. So we're going to look at the first body paragraph, which I've written out. So let's take a look. The opinion part, remember that comes first. Education is one of the most powerful tools available for reducing crime. Okay, so we've got our key words here. We've got education and we've got reducing crime. So reducing crime relates to the question and education is one of our key points, one of our main points. And it's a nice, short, clear sentence, all right? So this is a good example to follow. Reason. Many criminals turn to a life of crime due to a lack of alternative options or examples in their lives. Educating convicts in prison can provide them with the skills and guidance they need to be able to make a living legally once they are released, which in turn will greatly reduce their likelihood of recommitting and returning 
to jail. So we're explaining why, the reason why, education is so useful. So that's why we call it reason. Then we go on to the example. For example, a 19-year-old convicted of robbery. Now, we're imagining this person. This is not a real person, but it could be a real person. Would be far less likely to reoffend if given the opportunity to learn coding skills, coding skills, and earn a living as a computer programmer as the salary he could earn legally would outweigh his ill-gotten gains. And we'll look at that phrase, ill-gotten gains, in a few minutes. And then conclusion. Therefore, it's clear that educating prisoners is definitely an effective way of reducing the crime rate. So, what have we done? We've introduced it with the opinion. We've explained the logic of the reason why education is a good idea in the reason part. We've imagined an example that helps us to explain the point more for evidence example, the E. And then we've given a conclusion that just gives the overview again. And then once we've finished our first and second body paragraphs, we get to the next step, which is writing the conclusion. Conclusion needs two parts. It needs us to restate or say again the opinion that we have. So our opinion is that we partially agree. And it needs us to mention our main points again. So uh, educating criminals and reducing poverty. So that's what a good conclusion should have. And if we do things well, we can do it in just one sentence. So take a look at this one. In conclusion, it can be clearly seen that while educating criminals in jails would help to reduce crime, reducing poverty should also be a top priority. Okay? So we've mentioned both of the main points. We've given the opinion. We've summarized everything. And it's a very nice way for us to finish this essay. And then once we've finished all of that writing, we're going to move on to step eight, which is adding high level vocabulary. Now, you can put this one earlier, of course. You can plan ahead with your high level vocabulary. But it's a good idea to go back and check once you've finished and see if there are any words that, you know, you've used a sort of simple word and could you change it out for a higher level word. It's important as well to have plenty of higher level vocabulary because you need it if you want to get a seven or higher for your uh, vocabulary part, your lexical resource part. So if you don't have enough high-level vocabulary, it's virtually impossible for you to be able to get those higher scores. And we have an example here from our uh, body paragraph, and that example is ill-gotten gains. And that means uh, money made illegally. But, I mean, money made illegally is correct, but it's words that we basically know, right? But if we say ill-gotten gains, the examiner's brain, as he's reading it, is going boom, like that. <laughs> going, ooh, level seven vocabulary, level eight, level nine vocabulary. So it's good to try to drop in as many as you can. But, of course, don't make the mistake that many people make of thinking vocabulary is more important than organization. If you have to choose one, organization. It must be well organized. It must be clear. You can't write a big mess of an essay and then just throw some high level words on and expect to get a high score. High level vocabulary is, is kind of like the cherry on the top of the cake, all right? And the cake is the organization. You have to make the cake first. But if you're pretty confident about making your cake, writing a well-organized essay, then add some high-level vocabulary. And you can check out our crime vocabulary video. It's a special video just for kind of accompanying this video and giving you some high-level phrases that you can use if you have to write about this common topic of crime. So make sure you check out that video as well. And then finally, we reach step nine of the nine steps for band nine. 
Step nine is something that loads and loads of people don't do. And because they don't do it, they don't get the score that they should get. They don't get the score that they deserve. What is it? It's checking your essay after you've finished. So make sure, please make sure that you leave two or three minutes at the end to go through carefully and check your essay. Also check your IELTS task one uh, writing, but absolutely focus first on your task two because it gives you more points in uh, the overall score of your test. And what I want you to do when you're checking is to try to read it out loud. Of course, you're in a, a test room, an exam room, so you can't say, oh, well, the first point that I have, <laughs> you have to be a little bit quiet. You have to re read it under your breath like that. But make sure you actually read it because what our eyes do when we're checking our own work is to see what we think we wrote or see what we wanted to write, not what we actually did write. And if you go through a bit more carefully and say it out loud, you'll see the things that you actually did write, and then you'll find those mistakes. And so in a very basic way, why do we check our essay? So we check it because the easiest way to lose marks is to make basic mistakes. Because the more mistakes you make, the lower your, st your score becomes. And the easiest way to increase your score is to find those basic mistakes. And everyone makes them. I make them when I'm writing. You know, Shakespeare probably made mistakes. So you don't need to be proud about it. And don't be lazy about it either. Make sure you go back, you check, you find those basic mistakes, and it's gonna give your score, you know, maybe a half a band boost. If you were gonna get seven, you might get 7.5. If you were gonna get eight, you might get 8.5. It's a really, really important step, so don't skip it. And I've also given you a little challenge here to see how good you are at checking. So we've already talked about body paragraph one. That one has already, uh, we've already finished it, but we haven't looked at body paragraph two, all about reducing poverty. And so you can find it here under the video. And it has two grammar mistakes in it. I've put in two grammar mistakes. And what I want you to do is read carefully through body paragraph two. See if you can find the mistakes and write in the comments what the mistake is and how it should be corrected. What's the correct version, okay? It's a good challenge to see how carefully you can read something. So there you go. It's the nine steps for band nine. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, make sure to like and subscribe down here so that you don't miss any other IELTS preparation videos in the future. Now, if you are preparing for the IELTS test right now, make sure you check out our IELTS complete guide. It's over 38 hours of material to help you prepare for all parts of the test. We're constantly updating it with more materials for writing and speaking, reading and listening. It's a great way you won't find a more complete course anywhere. And usually it costs $199 but right now, there's a special link you can click down here for a special price, just for you, $12.99. So make sure to click down here and check it out. Thank you very much for watching the video. I really hope you found it useful. Good luck in your IELTS test, and I'll see you next time for another IELTS preparation video. See you then.